Well, hello. There you are. Uh, I want to talk a little today about tuning the banjo. You've had four, count them, one, two, three, four banjo lessons so far, and now uh, you can play Cripple Creek. You can, provided you practiced. Now, you got to go back and review all of that material several times. And get it smooth. Give yourself time. Don't don't try to rush. And don't worry about don't worry about it being absolutely perfect. You, you kind of want to be able to sing along with it and tap your foot along with it, even if you're going slow. But don't don't stress about it too hard. Just just keep at it. But I want to talk to you today about your tuning. Your, your tuning's not so great, and it, and that's okay. Uh, you're just starting. And so I remember when I was learning to play. Back up a little bit here. Pretty personal. Uh, when I was learning to play, uh, my tuning was always suspect. And when I was learning to play, really didn't have uh, didn't have electronic tuners like we have now. Uh, had tuning fork and had a pitch pipe and, and and that was about it so I want, I want to show you how how to do uh, well first I'll show you how to use your your little electronic tuner and then I'll show you uh, how to uh, how to tune your banjo like with a tuning fork or or just getting tuned to yourself and so that's what we'll do today and so mostly you're going to be seeing my uh, my left hand. That's the reason I'm way in here personal today. All right. So here we are. Now, let me pop that up here. Uh, maybe you can see that. Get some glare off of it. But that, that's my little electronic tuner. I've had this one a while. Now, if you're already kind of close to in tune, and, and, and pretty much any of these tuners will do that. So when I hit my first string, and I've detuned it here for you just for, for giggles so we can see. Sorry for jerking around so much. Now, you should see that little needle's telling me that I'm not quite in tune. So I want to, and it's telling me I'm flat, which means I need to tighten the string so that the string pitch needs to go up. And that should be, should be pretty close right there. And I'll do that for each string. So if a string is sharp, so that one's sharp, so it needs to come down. Now what I like to do is I like to come down to where it's flat and then go up, go up to the pitch. The reason I like to do that is it holds tune a little better. So if, I, if you tune up, it'll hold and tune a little better. So there's my G, it's pretty close, it's a little flat, or I'm showing a little flat. And it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. And then your fourth string, uh oh. That's maybe a fuzz sharp, but I think it'll be okay. And then our fifth string, uh oh, make sure you can still see it. And that's a little flat, so we'll bring it up just a touch. And sometimes we're only moving our strings just just the least little bit. And that's that's electric clip-on tuner. Obviously, when you use it, you want to turn it around here so you can see what you're doing. But if I had done that, you, you'd never been able to see it. Ho hopefully, that, that works pretty good. Now, we didn't have those when I was learning to play. We got them soon. I, I remember probably 1980, we got a a while back but we got we got an electronic tuner and it it was real helpful and thing things definitely improved uh, my banjo I, I played in tune a lot better uh, but I was playing in tune anyway we had a that's a tuning fork now you wrap it on something hard I usually wrap it on my head and it makes a tone and you'll never be able to hear that here. 
But if I take that and I wrap it on something hard and I touch it to my banjo bridge, it, it makes a little tone. And, and, and this is an E. You know, we don't have an E. We don't have an E on our banjo. So we have to... Uh, You have to figure out where an E is. And if you're tending for an E, it's that it's that second fret there. And so you'll want to get that note in tune, and then you work backwards. Now let's talk about relative tuning. Alright. And what that, what I mean with that is being in tune with yourself. You're relatively in tune. You're in tune with you. And f for the most part, when you're sitting at home playing and learning, as long as you're in tune with you, that's great. You don't have to be in tune with anybody else. Just be in tune with you. So let's start with our fourth string. And it can be any note you want it to be. Just tune that note. We know it's a D. You can tune it to... A D on the piano, if you can find a D, you can tune it to an E, you can tune it to whatever. Just you just want it to be a note, so it's not real loose. Now, fret that note or that string at the fifth fret, and then you're going to match the third string to that. And you want both of those notes to be the same note. So if this third string was not the same note, listen. Now when I was a kid, now that, those notes are easy to figure out that they're not the same. But when I was a kid learning, I came up with this thing in my head and I, I named it after a doorbell. And I called it the ding dong method. Like on a doorbell, you got ding dong, you got a high note, a high note, and a low note. And so that's the ding dong method. It's what I call it. Call it whatever you want. But when I listen to these two notes, there's definitely a ding and there's a dong. So I need to make my dong a ding. Let's check them. Boy, they're getting close. And that's pretty. That's pretty close. So that's your first one, fifth fret. Next string, fourth fret. And you want to make those both the same. But let's say they weren't. Let's say one of them was wrong. So let's listen to that. So you got your third string, third string, fourth fret, and then the second string. So listen. That second string is higher, so that's going dong, ding. So I need to come down to make them both the same. I got lucky there. If I'd have went too far. Now that's pretty obvious. Ding, dong, ding, dong. So we want to make those the same. Now, so that gets your second string in tune. Now you fret your second string at the third fret and then you match your first string. You do the same process on it, so if it's, so that's a dong, so we need to go the other way. So it needs to sharpen that up. So tighten it, and listen close. Those sound about the same note. You got one more string to tune, it's this guy. Come to the fifth fret, first string, all right? Hit that note, and then check it to you, so I'm going to change that. So you got your fifth fret, first string, and then you hit your fifth string. So listen, that's dong, ding, ding, dong, ding, dong. So we got a ding, which means it's too high. So. And now, okay, so, so we've gone through them. So let's, let's listen and, and see. Well, 
while it's not perfect in tune, but doggone, it's it's not bad either. So what you do is you're not done. You start over. You start with that fourth one. You leave it alone. You make little tiny adjustments. And now you're in tune with yourself. And that's pretty much all you need when you're practicing. So just like everything else that we've done so far, you, you've got to practice a little bit. And so you got, you've got to spend some time uh, working on tuning. You, you, got, you got to practice tuning. And just like anything that you do on a regular basis, you get better at it. The more you do it, the better you get. And Well, you picked a great instrument. You picked the banjo. And banjos have a lot of ways of getting out of tune. And uh, there are plenty of banjo jokes about banjos not being in tune. Well, those jokes are out there for a reason, because banjos get out of tune. And so you're going to have a lot of practice tuning. So I recommend, you know, when you get your banjo out to practice, tune up. If you've played a little bit, check your tuning. Tune it again. Just keep at it, and, and you're, you'll get better at tuning. So there you go. That's lesson five, and it's kind of short. We didn't do a whole lot other than just tune our banjo, which really is a whole lot uh so so work on that next time we'll talk a little about our left hand and and position and how to hold your banjo i'll have to get me a cameraman to help hold my camera so i won't be so i can move around that way you can see all sides of my hand here and well until then y'all subscribe if you hadn't already please do tell your friends share this with folks that want to learn how to play the banjo hit the like button and i'll see you kind folks next time